ready to make digitals your own again last time we crafted this unique belly band with lots of texture and interest and today we're transforming digital papers into a one-of-a-kind tag welcome it's barbara from vienna austria so if you missed the video where we created this please check out the link below this video So we are working in the October signature of my planner. And I want to make a tag for this page to add my to-dos onto. So I'm working with my Kit Mushroom Garden. And these are some of my ephemera pages. And there's plenty of options for making tags and today I want to take this tag right here so my first step is to fussy cut this this also gives me the perfect opportunity to try some new things I have some things in mind I printed all this ephemera on 200 GSM cardstock so that it's not so flimsy so my first step is usually to ink up the edges to give it that nice distinct vintage look next i want to make this tag larger so i'm going to give it a different background so let's move this out of the way and i'll use my mixed media mat for this this is by tonic studio and tim holtz this was a gift by my dear, dear friend, Louisa Heinzel, and I recently mentioned to her that I don't know how I lived without this before. <laughs> I was reluctant to use it because I didn't want to like make it dirty, but I love this and I think it does need to have a little bit of grunge on it because it's a tool, right? It doesn't have to be pristine. So I want to have a background dyed with distressed ink forest moss because i think this color will go beautifully with the leaves that i have on this tag and i just bought this 3d texture folder by sizzix and tim holtz this is called woven and it has a number 665768 so i am very curious to try this one out and i think this would make a beautiful background for my tag so I'm going to cut another piece of 200 GSM cardstock in the size of this embossing folder. So I want to dye this paper before I put it through the embossing folder. So I'm just going to take my ink and squish some of it here on my media mat. Obviously, you can use any kind of, I guess, plasticky surface or glass surface to do this. Then I'm going to add some water. Then I'll separate it like this because I want more like uh, droplets. And I'm also going to spray my paper. And then I'll just keep repeating this technique until I'm happy with the result. I might add another color in there as well, just to get some more variation. And I think I need to saturate this. I think the results might actually work better if I would use watercolor, uh, watercolor paper. Okay, I'm going to dry this. Once it has dried a little bit, we can see how much yellow we actually have in the forest moss. You can see it even better here on the back. That's always super interesting. And I also want to add this Distress Oxide peeled paint. So this is going to react differently. Remember, this was an ink and this is an oxide. So we'll have oxidation here, hopefully visible. So I'll use the same technique.
And now my paper is dry and the oxide always leaves like this cloudy effect. It is so fun to just experiment. Let's dry that again. I think that looks super interesting. By the way, I have no idea why this part of the paper is reacting differently than this part. I don't know where this line is coming from. I have no idea. So interesting. I'll go back to my forest moss. And I want, yeah, I want some areas where we see the forest moss on top of the oxide. Let's try that again. I feel like that has completely disappeared. So let's try something else. Let's add some water. I want some nice big drops. And then let's take them off with a paper towel. And we should see that on the oxide. Yep. Do you see how we have this varied cloudy surface now? We didn't have all of these drops in there before. And then I want to do the same thing with my Distress Maga Stain Wicked Elixir to add a bit of like sparkle. And I will add this mostly around the edges because that's what we'll be seeing mostly. Let's dry that so we can see the sparkle. That looks super cool. But I also want to bring in some more warmer colors because you see this tag here has so many warm colors. I want to also reflect those here. So I'm going to use some vintage photo. Same process. And the mica should actually sit on top of this even though we're adding this on top of the mica. Because from my experience, the mica always wants to be the top layer. <laughs> it's very interesting. I think we'll need some more of that. Maybe this is too light. Maybe I should add some walnut stain instead. Let's try that. Again, I'm concentrating more on the edges because the tag will, of course, cover up most of this. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so I have this now. We see the mica is still on top. And you see this part here is behaving completely different than this part. So here we have a lot more of the brown showing. It also feels completely differently than this part. This part feels more like a very pliable leather, while this feels just like regular stiff cardstock. Also the back is behaving differently. I don't know what's happening with this paper. I'm just going to go with it anyway. So I have my fold away die cut machine here. I've taken off two of the plates. I think that's how you do it with these, with these three D texture fades. My paper is damp, so that should be okay. Usually if you have a dry paper, you can just mist it the front and the back with some water, but this will give us a better impression and hopefully no tearing. So we'll set this in here, we'll put the plate on top, we'll angle this, actually I'll turn it around, we'll angle this a little bit, that will make it easier for the die cut machine to grab the folder. I also just recently found out with these 3D texture fades, you're supposed to pass it through three times. I have never done that, so let's do that this time. <laughs> The big moment. <sighs> yep. That looks pretty amazing. That definitely looks like it's woven. It's 
So that's the... Oh, I put it in wrong. I guess there is no wrong, but this would have actually been the side that I would have liked to be on the front. Because here we see the woven texture a lot better than here. So this is actually the debossed side. What a bummer. <laughs> we'll go with it. So next I want to bring out some of this darker green here. So I'm going to again take my forest moss and I'm going to go over this paper with the ink. So I think this provides a much better contrast now and it's much more similar to this dark green. I'm really liking that. So my plan is to cut out the same shape of the tag that I have here for my background. Before I glue this on, I do want to add some more texture. So I have this forest moss dyed cheesecloth. So I'll cut some pieces off that that we can tuck under. <laughs> this is hardly visible. I'm not sure that makes sense. I guess it would need to be darker. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> let's try to darken these. I could obviously do that with the ink pad, but I also have the Distress Oxide Spray. So I think that will just be quicker and easier. I'll just dye the whole thing. <laughs> so after I dried these, we have this shade now, which is definitely darker than what we had before. So I'm just going to stick these underneath in a few places have them peeking out just a little bit. And then I'm also going to add some sewing thread. I would also call this forest moss. <laughs> I think it's going to be quite difficult to cut the shape out when I have all these elements peeking out. So I think I would rather take these off again and first cut out the shape without actually gluing this on or maybe just gluing it on in the middle so that it stays in place. That should then also make it easier to tuck things in. So I'll use my trimmer. Actually, I want to make my life easier and I'll just round the corners and not add this shape on top. Okay, so now I can just tuck all my little pieces underneath. I have this little piece left over, so I'm just going to attach that here. Then I'll just make sure that all the edges are glued on. And I feel like it needs a little more of the mica magic. So I'm just taking the nozzle and I will go around here on the edges. And since I have dripped some here accidentally, I'm going to mop that up as well, of course. We're not going to waste any of that goodness. I 
Okay, again, let's dry this so that we can see the shine. So here we can see it now. And then I also want to make this head of the mushroom come out better. And I should have done that before I glued this on. And again, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I'll just do the best I can now. I'm going to add some Candied Apple Distress Embossing Glaze. And maybe we can make this red come out a little bit better that way. So I'm going to use my embossing pen and just go over that whole area here on top. Another way to make this come out better if you don't have embossing tools would be to just use your markers or water-soluble crayons or colored pencils and just color that in more vivid colors. What a gorgeous red color. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like once we've melted the powder. What a difference, don't you think? Wow, this has really come out beautifully. Very impressive. Then I took this to my sewing machine, went around it twice with a running stitch, and then this happened, which I'm totally fine with. But that is something to consider because, of course, this is an embossed paper. So it's already a lot more fragile than a regular paper or cardstock. And by going over this twice, it tore. It totally works for me with my grungy theme. But if that's not what you're going for, then you might not want to do that. Or be more careful. This is not having any effect. So let's figure out something else. I'll try my Distress Oxide Forest Moss Reinker. That should have a nice and saturated color. Alternatives would be watercolor or acrylic paint. Oh no, this is too light actually. Yep, yeah, this is not what I want. Oh, but it does add a very nice effect. So I'll do it anyway, but it's not what I had in my mind. So after that's dry, we don't see a lot of it, but we do see a little color variation here on the edges. You see that? So every layer adds something. And then I'm going to take my ground espresso distress oxide and directly use the ink pad to go around. And hopefully that will grunge up the edge and define it a little bit more. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to use black, that would be too harsh. So obviously I don't want my backside to look like this. <laughs> so I have cut out a piece of cardstock. This also happens to be Tim Holtz. Ooh, originally I thought I want to use this side, but now I'm thinking, actually I prefer this side. How interesting because we have a little addition of yellow here, which I like in this combination. So again, I'm going to round my corners. Before I do that, actually, I'm going to do something else. Because I want the back side to have some writing space for my to-dos, I want to add some of this here and I will trim this down here and here so that we still see the edge of this beautiful cardstock. And I just decided I'm not going to round the edges. And instead of gluing this on, I'm going to sew around this. Then I'm going to stamp focus onto my to-do list. And now I can glue this on this side. And by the way, I've inked up the edges. This time I used ground espresso because I wanted them to be really nice and dark. So let's glue this on. Interesting, light, dark, light. I'm not sure I've ever done that before. But I'm not done. So I want some more red on this tag and I thought I would try making like an elaborate crinkly kind of bow. 
I've never made one, so we'll see how this goes. I also haven't watched any videos on how to do that, <laughs> so I might regret that. I have this, what is it called? It's, doesn't say, it's a ribbon. <laughs> this is from uh, Sostrene Grene, which is a Danish chain. So I'll take some off. I don't know how much I'm going to need. So I want this to be crinkly. And I've seen Louisa Hansel use one of these little hair straighteners to flatten scraps of fabric and ribbon, which is such a cool idea. But I wonder if you could use an iron like this also to crinkle <laughs> your ribbon. Now, I don't know, this feels like polyester, so this might just be a disaster and melt, but I just have to try this. And if you do try this, please, please be careful with your fingers. We don't want to burn your fingers. So let's try maybe just a little bit on the end to see if this will completely melt or not. Okay, let's see, can we make some crinkles? This might actually work. So let's bunch this up. This is probably not the right kind of ribbon to crinkle, but it's what I have, so we'll make do with that. I also don't know how much point there is to really crinkling this as this will be in my planner and so it's going to flatten over time anyway. But still, I just want to try this. Probably should have watched the tutorial. <laughs> so if you try this with uh, polyester, please be careful. You might ruin your iron. There's lots of things that could happen. It's definitely getting crinkly. I do like that. And it's also getting kind of softer. Probably I'm breaking some of the fibers. I'm okay with this. I also don't know how to make these elaborate bows. I'm thinking maybe if we just put this around my hand. Like so. We leave a tail and we also make sure that we have the counterpart from the inside. Where's the inside end? So I have two ends and I have this here in the middle. So I'm thinking if I just hold these together like so and then put one end around this way and the other end the other way and then we could just tie a knot and then we pull these hmm. maybe it's also not the right type of ribbon if anyone knows of a good tutorial it would be great if you could let all of us know because I'm sure there's more of us out there who would love to know how to do this. I mean, it's not the worst. <laughs> Let's cut these short. It's really not so bad. It will obviously add a whole lot of bulk. If this was Christmas themed, I would probably add some little bells on it. Well, that's cute. I'm happy with this. So I want to add this on my page so that the bow will peek out here on top of this paper bag. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing with that. So I need the tag to be up here like this. And I'm going to cut out this pocket right here from the Mushroom Garden Ephemera page number 9. By the way, I'm linking this whole kit for you down below this video if you want to check that out. So I've cut it out, folded back the flaps, 
inked up the edges with walnut stain, sewed around it and sewed another piece of the forest moss dyed cheesecloth with some more of the sewing thread just right over it. I didn't even glue that. And now I can just glue that onto my page. I should have totally done this before, but I'm going to stamp the focus here as well. Okay, that worked out just fine. So now I can add my to-dos here and the bow can peek out behind this paper bag. And there we have it, a beautiful one-of-a-kind tag created from digital papers. I hope this inspires you to continue making digitals uniquely your own. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.